Countries in Africa were ravaged by Ebola. In 10 months, more than 6,000 people died. And according to a new biodefense report, if the U.S. does not get serious about Ebola and other bio threats, Americans will be vulnerable and underprepared to confront those biochemical challenges. For more on the story, we're pleased to be joined from Newsmax Washington by former United States Senator Joe Lieberman. Joe's now senior counsel at Kasowitz, Benson, Torres, and Friedman, and he also serves as co-chair for the Blue Ribbon Panel on Biodefense. Joe, thanks for your time here on Newsmax Prime. J.D., great to be with you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Now, earlier today, you released the results from your study on biodefense. Have we done enough to protect ourselves from bio or chemical attack? Uh, unfortunately, we have not. And, you know, it's 14 years since the anthrax uh, attacks on the Capitol, which you'll remember well, which closed uh, the Hart Center office building, in which I happen to have my office for about three or four months. Um, we're, we've, we've done some. I mean, we're in better uh, position to defend against bioterrorist attacks than we were then. But I've got to tell you, the, this uh, uh, panel that studied this, Tom Ridge, my co-chair, former um, a Secretary of Homeland Security bipartisan panel, uh, we concluded that we're spending about $6 billion a year on biodefense and we're not getting our money's worth. And, uh, and you cited Ebola, which is a good example uh, of what, what, what's lacking. I mean, a, Ebola virus was on a warning list um, as likely to come to America at some point for about 10 years, and yet we never developed a vaccine to it or significant uh, medical countermeasure when it broke out. It was pretty clear uh, to everybody that the federal government wasn't really ready to deal with it. Hospitals hadn't been prepared for it. We were lucky. Uh, we, we, the, the real incidence of the disease didn't come here, but next time it might well, and next time we want to make sure that we're ready uh, with hospitals and a medical system prepared to respond and also most important of all some kind of vaccine to help people. So you you list a vaccine as a preventative action in the case of something like Ebola but generally speaking what is the most important action we can take to better protect America? Okay th this report uh, I wouldn't is uh, is really substantial and I'm very proud that I was able to work on it got 33 major recommendations, 100 action items, uh, a lot of them quite detailed. Uh, the BioWatch program in the Department of Homeland Security, in our opinion, using old technology, not really working, got to fix it or get something uh, better. Um, the, the, we don't have a, most of these infectious diseases and even um, uh, th threats like uh, Ebola begin in the animal population. We don't have a national registry, current registry of, of the spread of, an of diseases among animals so we can have a warning. But really, if you, uh, I'd say the most important um, recommendation we make is the first one, which is the, the whole operation right now, six billion dollars a year, is just not coordinated and money's being wasted there's overlap so we we, we said we got to have somebody to drive this have budget authority a unified budget and uh, uh, to my way interestingly even surprisingly we re recommend the vice president we didn't want to create another that's, czar we didn't want to put a department in charge of all the other departments we said give it to the vice president he's got the stature give him the authority and and he can bring this together we're not talking about joe biden specifically but, you know, that's, that would be a good start. Whoever is vice president. Well, of course, ahead, and that, that takes this. me from policy to politics. Of course, you were the Democratic nominee for vice president in 2000. Uh, you won your right. last term as a senator from Kentucky, uh, pardon me, from Connecticut, as an independent. Uh, but you still caucused with the Democrats. And you, and you ran for president as a pro-defense Democrat. Now with Jim Webb out of the Democrats race, is there a pro-defense Democrat in the bunch pursuing the presidency? 45 seconds for an answer, Joe. Yeah, J.D., it's, it's a really important question, and it's pretty obvious. Look, I joined the Democratic Party as a kid uh, because I was inspired by President John F. Kennedy. Uh, strong, muscular, pro-defense foreign policy. That, that wing of the party, uh, unfortunately, uh, it's there, but it's small, and it's, it's shouted out by 
others who don't uh, share the same philosophy. And I think unless the Democratic Party regains credibility on foreign and defense policy, there's going to be a reluctance by a lot of people to vote for a Democratic candidate for president. Fair enough. Former Senator Joe Lieberman, we thank you for your time tonight from Newsmax, Washington. Thanks, JD. Thank you, sir. Now, this programming reminder, Sarah Palin joins Newsmax TV's all-star post-debate program later tonight. It also features Steve Malsberg, Dick Morris, John Zogby, Michael Reagan, Craig Shirley, and a whole lot more. And, heck, they're even going to have me drop by, too. Plus, you want to vote in our instant online poll. You tell us who won the debate. So make plans to join us tonight starting at 10 p.m. Eastern. When we return, the Attorney General of Michigan is all in for Jeb Bush. Find out why when we come back.